Welcome to part 37 in this series. It's actually the 42nd video I've made, as there have been a few addendums. The runtime of this one is more than I prefer them to be, but I set out to review the Shakespeare codes in the 1611 King James Bible and ended up finding a lot more. Three times in the King James Bible, the words shake and spear are printed in the same chapter. Last year I posted a couple videos with some ideas on how I thought those words were connected to 1740, a number brought to our attention by Alexander Waugh that's identified with Edward de Vere, the 17th Earl of Oxford. In addition to these examples found in the three chapters, all from the Old Testament, I believe there's a fourth in the New Testament that uses the words break spear. I believe each of these were typeset in accordance with the number 1740 to signify that Edward de Vere was Shakespeare. In addition to this, I think whoever did this encoding work on the Bible may have included more information on the same pages relevant to de Vere, which I'll go over after taking another look at the Shakespeare codes, which will in some cases be different than what I presented in the earlier videos. The first example of shake and spear appearing together is in the book of Job chapter 41 verse 29, shaking of a spear. The next is in Psalm 46. Shake and spear are printed in verses 3 and 9. Then in Isaiah chapter 2, first column, spears is printed in verse 4. Shake appears twice on the next page in verses 19 and 21. Originally in those two verses, the word destroy was used and later changed to shake in the King James Version. I believe this was done so that shake and spear would appear three times in the Old Testament. Okay, so Job, Psalms, and Isaiah have shake and spear printed in the same chapter. Then in the New Testament, I believe the fourth example is found in the Gospel of John chapter 19 with the words break spear printed above and below the number for verse 34. The three in the Old Testament coincides with Tria Sun Omnia, the all things in three pattern Alexander Waugh explains in his videos. He also explains that Hermeticists like John Dee and Edward de Vere didn't understand the Godhead as a trinity, the view asserted by Orthodox Christianity, but instead as a quaternary, that is a transcendent trinity which also contains the material world, God's creation, three and one. I'm suggesting the possibility of that occurring here shake and spear appearing together three times in the Old Testament and once in the New as Breakspear, each example connected to 1740 or Edward de Vere. These three pages are from the book of Job chapters 40 through 42. I think Oxford believed himself to be similar to Job in that he's a man who suffered great misfortune yet held firmly to his belief in God. This affinity with Job may be why there's so much information encoded on these three pages. Also, there's a code that tells us Edward de Vere is 4T and 2T, or 40 and 42, which is found here in between chapters 40 and 42. Later, I'll explain more about what's here, but right now I'm just focusing on Shakespeare, which is in chapter 41, verse 29. Looking at Job 41 in the Geneva Bible, similar to the one owned by Edward de Vere and the Bishop's Bible, you can see that shaking of the spear and shaketh the spear are printed in verse 20. In the King James Bible, some verses in the book of Job were assigned different numbers than the ones in previous Bibles. Shaking of a spear is in verse 29 and is printed on line 55. In Roman numerals, 5 is the letter V, so I'm suggesting that 5-5 five, five could be understood as VV or double V, which De Beers sometimes signed his name as. Alexander Waz pointed out that a possible cipher for 1740 is 57, which is equal to 17 plus 40. I think another may be 29, the verse shaking of his spear is printed in. 29 is equal to 17 plus 12 and Latin gematria, 12 is equal to the letter M, which in Hebrew is equivalent to 40. Okay, counting all the characters in the verse, there are 40 before the words shaking of a spear, and beginning with shaking of a spear, there are 17 characters till the end of the line, which is different in previous Bibles.
After shaking of a spear, there are 22 or twice 11 words till the end of the page. Like 1740, twice 11 is another concept covered in previous videos that I believe is associated with Edward de Vere. The next Shakespeare codes found in Psalm 46, shakes in verse 3 and spears in verse 9. Above Psalm 46 is verse 17 from the previous psalm and it ends with the words, forever and ever. In the Geneva Bible, those words are translated as world without end. I believe this was changed because ever is both an anagram of veer and an abbreviation for evir. The first thing is, when we count the lines of Psalm 46, the 17th lands on verse 4, beginning with the letter T. 17 4 t notice the word shake above it after 17 4 t if we count another 17 lines the fourth word on the line is the i've explained in previous videos that in classical greek h or eta was used for the long vowel e applying that here and the t h e can be spelled t t e e 17 lines fourth word t followed by spear. That's shake 17-4-T and 17-4-T spear. How I think 1740 is used to connect Edward de Vere's name and Shakespeare is, after the word ever or evere, remember that word was changed from world without end in the previous Bible, if we count the lines after evere, there are 17, then the word shake. Then, counting 17 lines after shake, we end up on the word the, just below the verse number 9. Apply the classical Greek use of eta here, the can be spelled as t, and there are four thes or four t's before the word spear. That's evir and shake, connected by 17 lines, then shake and spear, connected by 17 lines and four t's. Evir, 17, shake, 17, four t, spear. Also, the or t is the fourth word on the line before spear. Before it are 17 words. 17 for t spear. And there are 17 characters before the word spear. Edward de Vere's Earl number, spear. There's even the allusion to God and Veer because the word God is printed both 17 and 40 words from Spear and all the prior 1740s. Some of you will disagree, but I just don't see all this happening without design. The third Shakespeare codes in Isaiah 2 and is printed across two pages. In previous Bibles, the word shake in verses 19 and 21 was translated as destroy. I have a few ideas on how this might be encoded. Notice that the verse reference numbers add to 17, which I'll return to later. First, starting with verse 1, count 17 lines. Then there are 40 words followed by spears. In the Bible, the word plowshares is printed as a single word, as two separate words, and here on the last line with a hyphen. A hyphen is used to connect a word when a sentence runs out of space. When that happens, we still count it as a single word. For this count, I'm going to apply that here. 17 lines, 40 words, spears. Another code can be found by adding up the verse reference numbers, which total 17. If we use that as a line number and then start counting the lines, the 40th lands on the word nation just below the verse number 4, which is lined up perfectly over a letter T. Probably a coincidence. If we count the words and this time count plowshares as two words, there are 17 followed by spears. Maybe that's why they hyphenated plowshares rather than printing it as a single word or as two separate words like it is elsewhere in the Bible. 
With a simple addition of a hyphen, 1740 spears can be found two different ways. Now if we do a straight count of the lines from the top of the page, Spears is printed on the 29th line. Like I explained earlier, I believe 29 is a cipher for 1740. Then counting the lines after Spears, the word Shake printed on the next page is on line 57. 57 is 17 plus 40. I believe 29 and 57 are ciphers for 1740. Notice how sonnets 29 and 57 are two of the 17 sonnets printed with the De Vere double B character. So we have Spears and Shake connected by 29 and 57, ciphers for 1740. The second time Shake is used appears 67 lines after Spears. Using Gamatria, the letters of the name Francis add up to 67, so it could be indicating Francis Bacon. But the letters V, V, E, R, E, V are spelled with a double V, also add up to 67. Also, using the repeated count, 67 is equal to three X's. Could this be signifying Christ's name three times? All right, from the top of the page on line 29, we have the word spears. Then 57 lines later, the word shake. 29 and 57 are ciphers for 1740. Then 67 lines after spears, shake is printed a second time. Does it indicate Edward de Vere or Francis Bacon as a second Shakespeare? Or does it stand for Christ's name three times, again connecting God and Vere? Sixty-seven appears again because there are sixty-seven words between shake in verse 19 and the one in verse 21. Also, printed below the second shake is the number for verse 22 or twice eleven, which is something else that may have been intentionally typeset. With these scans, the pages aren't flat. The inner margins are curved where they meet in the spine. The two shake words and spears make a right triangle a Masonic symbol which I think would be more on point if the pages weren't curved. Okay, those were the three chapters in the Old Testament with the words shake and spear. Now we're looking at the one example from the New Testament, the words break spear, printed in the Gospel of John, chapter 19. Notice how we're in the fourth gospel, and using Gematria, 19, the chapter number, is equal to the letter T. Gospel 4, chapter 19, or T. 4, T. If we count the lines, the 17th lands on these letters, ed, hyphenated from accomplished on the preceding line. It's followed by a comma and an asterisk referring to a psalm number in the margin. I believe the asterisk might also serve as a hint to look closer at what's here. I know the abbreviation for Edward would usually be EDW or EDWD, but let's take a closer look. Beginning with Ed on line 17, if we count the letters right to left like Hebrew, we land on the letter W and the word were. W is comprised of two letter V's, so were can be spelled V-V-E-R-E, -E, Veer's name spelled with a double V. I believe were is another word like ever sometimes used to indicate Edward de Vere's name. Here we have Ed, 17 letters, V. Vere. To show you what I mean about de Vere's name and were, this is taken from the Shakespeare poem The Rape of Lucrece dedication. The word were begins the next sentence, but when you edit it this way, it reads like a twice eleven or twenty-two word note hidden within the dedication to Henry Rosely from Edward de Vere, signed double V E R E. Okay, so after line 17, Ed were or Ed V Veer, continue counting and line 40 lands on the number for verse 34. For Edward de Vere, I think 34 would be a very important number. 34 is equal to double 17, which would be seen as a double portion. 
In the Bible, a double portion is a double blessing from God. Also, with the repeated count, 34 is equal to 2 L's. Using gematria, L is equal to 11, and 2 L's are twice 11. Thirty-four is comprised of a three and four, or a ternary and a quaternary. Three plus four equals the holy number seven, and three times four equals twelve, another important number in the Bible and myth. Twelve is equal to the letter M, or Mem in Hebrew, which equals forty. Seven forty would be Edward de Vere's king and code number. Three four totals both seven and forty. Also, Sonnet thirty-four begins with the de Vere double V character. Because 34 is equal to double 17, and I believe is a cipher for twice 11, I think the number held significance for Oxford and is used in some of these codes. Alright, so on line 40 we have the number 34 printed in between the words break and spear. After spear there are 17 letters before the word forth and forthwith. H or Eta was used for the long vowel E in Classical Greek, so the letters for fourth can be spelled F-O-R-T-E, spear 17 4 t Break spear does appear in prior Bibles. An early etymologist of proper names, Richard Verstigen, wrote in 1605 that Break spear, Shakespeare, and the like have been names imposed upon the first bearers of them for valor and feats of arms. If the name suggesting valor, valor in Latin is virtus, the first syllable being vir, and valiant is fortis. Edward de Vere was the fourth T, and using gematria, the letters of the name Oxford equals 76, the same as four letter T's. T's equal to 19, four T's equals 76. I'd like to point out that in 1571 and 81, Edward de Vere had been tournament champion in the tilt yard at Whitehall Palace. One of the main objectives in jousting is to break a lance, or break a spear, on the opponent, and I wonder if break spear is also alluding to Oxford's skill in the lists. Maybe it's a coincidence, but if we count the words beginning with break and go directly to spear, the fortieth word is were, or v-v-e-r-e. -E. What I find interesting about this is, the word after were is done, which is similar to the words that follow the 17 ed b vir code beginning on line 17. Those words are now accomplished. 17 ed v vir now accomplished and 40 v vir done are saying pretty much the same thing. It could be a coincidence or maybe it reflects some of the last words spoken by Jesus. It is accomplished or it is finished. All right, so beginning on line 17 and counting right to left, 17 letters, we get the name Ed V. Vere. And on the 40th line, the verse number 34, with break and spear printed above and below it. After spear, there are 17 letters followed by the word fourth or 4T. Four All the examples I've shown won't fit on a single page, but I'm just pointing out again that shake and spear are printed in the same chapter in three books of the Old Testament and once as break spear in the New, which coincides with three and one, the hermetic idea of the Godhead being a trinity which contains God's creation, the material world. Last year, when I first looked at the Shakespeare codes, I didn't notice that on and near these pages there appear to be possibly acrostic messages, often involving verse 17. Because De Vere's the fourth T, or 40, and I think he believed he shared commonality with the character Job, it makes sense to me that codes might be included here on the page where chapter 40 begins. This is where Job chapter 40 starts. The first thing on the page is the verse number 4, followed by the letter T, 4T. Beneath the number 4 are the words King and Fourth, or 4T. After that, there's 34 lines to the words Her Labor. 34 is double 17. 34 is also 2 L's with the repeated count. L is equal to 11. 2 L's are twice 11. Below the words Her Labor is the number for verse 17. 
Verse 17 is 22 or twice 11 lines till the end of the column, and a total of 40 lines until chapter 40. The verse reference numbers for chapter 40 add up to twice 11, and there are 40 lines from chapter 40 till the end of the page. This is verse 17, which again is 40 lines from chapter 40. The words printed above the number 17 are her labor, again which is 34 lines from King 4T. 34 is double 17 and I believe a twice 11 cipher. Compare the translation from the King James to the Geneva Bible similar to the one owned by Oxford. In the Geneva, the verse number was 20 and was changed to 17 in the King James Version. Also, the pronouns were changed from him in the Geneva to her in the King James. Why would they do this? If you can just consider for a moment that Queen Elizabeth had children. Now read the verse above 17. She is hardened against her young ones as though they were not hers. Then there's a colon followed by the words her labor, which are printed over the number 17, Edward de Vere's Earl number. Again, they've changed the gender and the verse number from earlier Bibles. Looking at the etymology of the word labor regarding childbirth, it was used when the Bible was being translated. It reads, Sense of physical exertions of childbirth is attested from 1590s, short for labor of birth, early 15th century. The sense also is found in Old French and compared to entrave in childbirth suffering, see travail. The words he travailed in the Geneva Bible were changed to her labor in the King James. Did they make these changes to reflect the way Elizabeth didn't acknowledge her children, treating them as though they were not hers? with her labor printed over the number 17, meaning Oxford was her child. Notice that above the words her labor are four words, four in Dutch is veer, and there are 17 characters before the word were. A W is comprised of two V's, so the word were can be read as V-V-E-R-E. -E. Like ever, it's a word sometimes used to indicate de Vere's name. Following it are the words not hers. Is this telling us that 17 V. Veer is one of her young who she's hardened against, treating him as though he's not hers? Again, I found this on the page where Job chapter 40 starts. For them to change the gender and verse numbers and the words so that they read her labor over verse number 17 seems to me a strange coincidence. maybe an impossible one. I also want to offer the suggestion that instead of her labor, meaning her child being 17, Oxford, that this is referring to a child she had was 17. Job 40 continues on to Job 41 where shaking of a spear is. In the left column, verse 17 is on line 12. The twelfth letter is M and Hebrew Mem equivalent to 40. The words below it are dar, a colon, the, and beneath that, together. In Spanish, dar, d-a-r, means to give. In Italian and Latin, it's dare. In a previous video, I explained how the letter k used to represent the sound of g, and that k and g are a minimal pair, two letters that vary only by a single sound. In Hebrew, keter means crown. So if we read this acrostically, 17 dar the together, and translate it, we get 17 give the, then right to left like Hebrew, crown to. 17 give the crown to. In the next column, verse 17 is on line 22, twice 11. Above it are the words no error. Even though here the word air is referring to air, A-I-R, it's a homophone of air, H-E-I-R. Alexander Waz presented the theory that Henry de Vere, the 18th Earl of Oxford, was actually the son of Henry Rosalie, the 3rd Earl of Southampton. If this is true, then technically Edward de Vere had no heir. He would also have no heir if Rosalie was the son of he and Queen Elizabeth. 
Above this is the word gether or keter in Hebrew, again meaning crown. And above that on line 17 is the word face. In the previous two videos, I go over a poem found in the frame of a Tudor family portrait by Lucas de Ayer. I think the word face is being pointed to, but I'm uncertain exactly why. I thought maybe it has something to do with Henry Rosely. I'm not sure what it means, if anything, but I'm just pointing out here that it's on line 17, with the word for crown beneath it, then no air, above verse number 17, which is on line twice 11. We're still on the same page. The acrostics above and below the number for verse 22, twice 11, are the covert and their shadow. In the right column, verse 17 is on line 22. It reads, They are joined one to another. They stick together that they cannot be sundered. Is this telling us something about the secret society, twice eleven brethren? Again, same page, first column. These seventeen lines, beginning on line forty, I'm going to return to later. It's possibly a set of codes referring not only to Oxford, but the works of Shakespeare. Anyone who watches the video might be able to help me figure it out, so I'll save it for towards the end. Now we're on the last page of Job, chapter 42. On line 7, there's a 34 who is a king acrostic covered in a previous video. Kind of reminds me of the Breakspear Code in the Gospel of John. In the second columns, the acrostic that reads, Twice Eleven Brethren. Then, 22 lines later, is the name Job followed by a colon. Beneath that are 17 letters followed by the word brethren. Taking a closer look at this section, it's different in the Geneva Bible, but in the King James, notice how once chapter 42 begins, the message between numbers 1 and 7, or 17, Edward de Vere's Earl number, is, Job submitted himself unto God. Then the number 7, de Vere's King number, has the word God on either side. I know I'm repeating this, but I think Oxford likened himself to Job, a man who suffered many trials but always held to his faith in God. Okay, so 22 lines after the acrostic twice eleven brethren, we get the name Job, followed by a colon. Beneath that are 17 letters, followed by the word brethren. But if we count the words after Job, the 17th is 40. Something I saw that Chris Johnson also pointed out is, below verse number 17, the words of days kind of look like of bays. The laurel made of bay leaves is a symbol of Apollo and great poets, so this might be saying 17, meaning Oxford, of bays. Those are the pages covering Job 40-42 to with shaking of a spear in chapter 41. You can disagree with those interpretations, but I think the Her Labor 17 verse is pretty compelling. Let's check out the next page and see where this goes. In Psalm 46, the words Evir, Shake, and Spear were all connected by 1740. On the page, there's one example of a verse 17. It begins on line 4, or Vir, and above it are the words Thy Children Princes. Could this be talking about Rosalie and Henry de Vere, neither of whom were technically his heir? In the next column, line 34, double 17 or twice 11, is the word Sion or Zion, but it's a homophone of Sion, which is a descendant usually of a prominent family. On the same page with the Psalm 46 Shakespeare Code, we had 17 lines and four thes, or four t's, using the classical Greek eta for the long vowel e. There's something similar here in the next column, except it's on line 34, which is double 17 and a twice 11 cipher. After the word scion, there are three thes, or t's, with the fourth being the letters t-i-e, hyphenated from the word city on the preceding line. Sion, 4T, or 40. After that are the words of the great king. Thy children, princes, 17, and Sion, 40, of the great king. Kind of an interesting coincidence.
Psalm 46 is on the right side page. The left side page may have also been typeset so that specific words fell on certain lines. In the right column, line 17 reads, Majesty. Beneath it's the number 4, or Veer, and beneath that is Rusly, hyphenated from Prosperously on the previous line. Rosely, R-O-U-S-L-Y, sounds similar to Rosely, the third Earl of Southampton who was possibly the son of Elizabeth and Edward de Vere. Seven and seventeen would have been Edward de Vere's king and earl numbers. In the left column, below verse number seven, is enemies that hated us, and above and below verse seventeen is the enemy have we. According to the correspondence of King James, Robert Cecil's code number was ten, and below the verse number for ten is from the enemy. Another coincidence is below enemies that hated us is the number 8, and above the enemy have we are the letters C-H-E-T-H, -E which in Hebrew spells het, the letter H, and is equivalent to 8. Again, looking at the correspondence of King James, number 8 is Edward Bruce, first Lord Kinloss, who was a Scottish lawyer and judge, and played an important role in King James' succession to the throne of England. Are these acrostics telling us that Edward Bruce and Robert Cecil were enemies of Edward de Vere and Henry Rosely? Now we're looking again at the two columns of Isaiah chapter 2 printed across two pages. On the first page is a single verse 17. The number for verse 17 is printed on line 4 or veer. Beneath it are four letters, the fourth being a T, 17 4 T. Beneath it's the word fatherless. J. Hall Carpenter commented on one of my videos that Oxford had underlined Exodus 22 22 in his copy of the Geneva Bible. 22, of course, is twice 11. Exodus 22 22 reads, Ye shall not afflict any widow or fatherless child. In the margin note is a reference to Zechariah 7.10, which totals 17. Oxford must have seen this as a fortuitous lining up of numbers because this can be understood as the widow's son, the Masonic legend Hiram Abiff, chief architect of Solomon's temple. I think 1740 fatherless means 1740 widow's son. The words after fatherless even read plead for the widow. Beneath that, we have another example of the word gether or keter, in Hebrew meaning crown. On the second page, the seventeenth line is the verse number seventeen, after which are forty lines. Beneath the number seventeen are the words bowed down, meaning someone who is weighed down, troubled, or burdened, like Job. If during his time, bowed down meant agreeing to the demands or following the orders of someone, maybe it's referring to his eventual agreement to support James' ascension to the throne. In the second column, above verse number 17, is the word tinkling, referring to the sound made by small bells. In the Dictionary of Music in Shakespeare, it's explained that bells were jangled together in untuned confusion to celebrate high births of kings, deliverances, and coronations. In Shakespeare, when Richard the Duke of York makes his claim to King Henry's crown, he says, Ring bells aloud burn bonfires clear and bright to entertain great England's lawful king. Again quoting music in Shakespeare, the dying King Henry IV, thinking his son is eerily waiting to inherit the crown, reproaches him in the following terms. Then get thee gone, and dig my grave thyself, and bid the merry bells ring to thine ear, that thou art crowned, not that I am dead. So I think the word tinkling is referring to the sound of bells ringing, and the announcement of a king. It's over the number for verse 17, Edward de Vere's earl number. Those are the verse 17 acrostics in Isaiah chapter 2, which is the last chapter in the Old Testament with Shakespeare codes.
Now we're looking at the chapter with Breakspeare in the Gospel of John, chapter 19, on the left side page. Second column, line 17, reads, Your King. Beneath the number for verse 17 are the words fourth or forty, followed by skull, which I think may be alluding to the skull of Yorick, the most famous symbol in Hamlet. Count 17 more lines, and we have the word king, 22, which is twice 11, then written, I have written. Looking at both pages of chapter 19, you can decide if the typesettings are a coincidence. There's one more thing about the Breakspeare page in line 17. The asterisk following the letters spelling Ed is for a margin note referring to Psalm 69.22. In the Geneva Bible, they mistakenly have it as Psalm 68. I checked it out in the King James Bible and found something interesting. Psalm 69.22 reads, Let their table become a snare before them, and that which should have been for their welfare, let it become a trap. The verse begins the prophecies of the destruction of Christ's persecutors. And even though there's a margin note to it in earlier Bibles, I think here there's a kind of subtext where it's meant to be understood as vengeance against Devere's enemies. I'll explain. Notice that the number for verse 17 is on line 17, with the words mercies and servant above and below it. In video 27, I explained that I think one of the meanings of the mercy codes in the Bible might be that they're referring to Mercy Island, where Devere may have eventually lived. Here, combined with the word servant, it might mean he's in the service of Christ. 17 lines after the verse number 17, verse 22 begins on line 34 which is double 17 and a cipher for twice 11. Again, this is the start of the prophecies of the destruction of Christ's persecutors. What would this have to do with Edward de Vere? In the second column, line 17 begins with, shall inherit it, then a colon followed by 40 lines till the end of the page. So 17 shall inherit it, then 40 lines. Maybe this acrostic around line 17 in the second column will tell us what's going on. Above and below line 17 in the word shall inherit it are letters hyphenated from the word possession on the preceding line. The letters spell scion, which means the descendant of usually a prominent family, followed by the seed shall inherit it and then the word name. The verse number 36, I don't know. 3 plus 6 is 9, 3 times 6 is 18. If Henry Rosley was the son of Edward de Vere and Elizabeth, he would have been Henry the Ninth and the 18th Earl of Oxford. I don't know if it applies to the Bible verse, but there's something going on with the number 36. In previous videos, I've shown how Sonnet 36 is printed to also resemble a 38. Using Gematria, T is equal to 19, and two T's added together equal 38. The song is about the poet, Edward de Vere, and the fair youth, Henry Rosley, having to remain separate so as to avoid shame. Why? Back to the Bible, there's Sion, the seed, not sure if the 36 has anything to do with that. Then, on line 17, there's shall inherit it, followed by the word name. If we count the lines after the word name, the seventh is V-E-R, the seventeenth is the number four, or Veer, and the thirty-fourth is also V-E-R. Seven and seventeen would be De Vere's king and earl numbers, and thirty-four is double seventeen and a twice eleven cipher. Three times after the word name, we get examples of Veer. It could all be a coincidence. Or, by connecting De Vere through number to the prophecies of the destruction of Christ's persecutors, someone's prophesizing God's vengeance against the enemies that have taken his destiny from him. Now I'm going to return to Job 41 where we get the first 1740 Shakespeare Code. I'm not sure exactly what to make of this, but I think there is something here. I have some ideas, but not all of it figured out, so please bear with me. If you're watching this, maybe you can help. 
It's from lines 40 to 57, ending with the word spears. 57 is equal to 17 plus 40. In total, there are 17 lines. Let's take a closer look. First, compare the section with the Geneva Bible. The verse numbers are different, and notice how they change the word from fish panniers to spears. Okay, what I've done is remove all the information after the colons because I believe this is the information we're supposed to focus on. And I kept the wills and wilts because I think they serve as hints that we're talking about Will Shakespeare. The 40th line on the page, which is the first line here, reads, hook into his nose. Animals with hooks in their noses are, of course, oxen. I found a translation for this verse that says it's referring to oxen, so I think the line's referring to Oxford. The words through with a thorn, I would guess, is referring to a rose. Like it says in the sonnets, roses have thorns. The next words are unto thee. This I can't figure out. It has the number three, Rosalie's Earl number above it, but I'm not sure what it means. The next lines I believe are a kind of palindrome, which I've shown in several videos, with H or Eta being used for the long vowel E, T-H-E-E -E is spelled T-E-E-E, -E -E. T. Read from top to bottom, it's 2T, 4T, 4E vir. Then read the other way, it's E vir, 4T, 4T2. What I find interesting about this is, using the repeated count, 42 happens to equal two Ts. There are three sets of double tau initials found on the sonnet's cover in the dedication and at the beginning of sonnet 122. And watching Alexander Waugh's videos, I learned that Edward de Vere was 40 and the fourth T. This acrostic palindrome tells us that E. Vere is both 2T and 4T, or 42 and 40. And we get the same message hidden as an acrostic in sonnet 22 or twice 11, which I go over in video 23 for anyone who's interested. Twice 11, who is 40, 42. The next words are a bird maidens. There is a bird maiden that happens to appear in Shakespeare's play, The Life of King Henry VIII, and refers to the phoenix, which is Queen Elizabeth. Here we're looking at the line from Henry VIII with the words Maiden Phoenix, which happens to be in Act 5, Scene 5, or VV. It begins with a colon, and when you count the words, the 17th coincidentally is air. The line reads, But as when the bird of wonder dies, the Maiden Phoenix, her ashes new create another air, with air being the 17th word. To me, that seems a bit too coincidental. Next we get the words, Banquet of Him. I did a search and something turned up in Shakespeare's Macbeth. It doesn't read Banquet of Him, but instead reads, It is a banquet to me. In the play, there's a banquet that celebrates Macbeth's coronation. Curiously, the page where these words are printed begins with 40 words followed by King. That's 40 words, King. And counting the lines on the page, the 17th begins with the king. More coincidence. The next line reads, Among the merchants, hyphenated from Among the merchants, a line which can be found in the Merchant of Venice. On line 4, how now, Shylock, what news among the merchants? It's on page 173, with Gematria, 17 equals R, 3 equals C. RC, initials for Rosie Cross. Beyond that, though, I haven't found anything here. The 17th line reads, I say my daughter is my flesh and blood. And the 40th line has the word winter, which is a Devere reference in the sonnets. But there's nothing here about him being an heir or a king or anything of note that I can find. Maybe someone else can. The next words are barbed irons. I thought this might be referring to two types of crowns, the crown of thorns and the iron crown, which is a reliquary and maybe one of the oldest royal insignia of Christendom. Notice how it's under the verse number 7. 
Edward de Vere would have been Edward the Seventh. As far as lines from Shakespeare goes, the only words I found close to barbed irons were barbed steeds in Richard the Third. I thought, well, steeds wore iron horseshoes, but that seemed too much of a stretch. Still, out of curiosity, I looked up that line in the first folio and found something interesting. Like among the merchants, it happens to be on page 173. Again, 17 equals R and 3 equals C. R, C, rosy cross. There are also three-letter G's that form an acrostic triangle. G is the Masonic letter for God. Richard III is the only play in the first folio that has a colon printed in its title like this. Often with codes, it's after a colon that you begin counting. Immediately following it, on the next line, is a W comprised of a double V. Difficult to see here because there's a crease. Begin counting here, and the fortieth line reads, And if King Edward be as true and just. Edward is word for or vir, and the seventh word is true or virum as King de Vere would have been Edward the Seventh. Beginning with the double V, there are 47 lines in total. Using Gematria, the letters of the name Vere total 47. Also, 47 is 7 plus 40, which would have been de Vere's king in code number. Looking at Richard's opening monologue, line 40 reads, Of Edward's heirs, with the third word being heirs. Henry Rosley was the third Earl of Southampton. I don't have solutions for everything here, but is this an acrostic puzzle or part of one about Oxford that uses lines from Shakespeare which leads to more clues about him being a king? I know the first folio wasn't published for another twelve years, but there may have been notes on the manuscripts, or an overall schematic detailing typesettings and what coded information would go where for the eventual publication of the folio. Maybe it's a puzzle that wasn't completed before the Bible went to print, but there's a lot of coincidence here, so make of it what you will. I have one more thing I want to show you. It's a couple pages from Breakspeare in John 19. If you turn 12 pages from the start of the Gospel of John, you end up here, chapter 17, verse 17. Like I've explained many times, 12 is equal to the letter M, which in Hebrew is equivalent to 40. So, chapter 17, page 12, or 40, 1740. Okay, count the lines, and line 40 begins with, as I am. Beneath that, the number 17, then the words, truth, thy word is truth, followed by 17 lines till the end of the page. As we know, during that time, only two people have been quoted using the words, I am that I am, William Shakespeare and Edward de Vere. Here on line 40, we have, as I am, and truth, thy word is truth, reflects the de Vere family motto, Vero nihil virius, nothing truer than truth. This code appears in chapter 17, verse 17, on page 12, a cipher for 40, and is typeset to begin on line 40, and has 17 lines after it to the end of the column. Did this also happen by chance? The Bible is a massive text, and I know certain words will randomly fall on certain lines, but these acrostics aren't on random pages. They're where the Shakespeare codes are printed. What's interesting to me is that they seem to make sense if we think of Edward de Vere as a tragic figure, an illegitimate son of Elizabeth's who had to give up his right as heir and taking credit for the works of William Shakespeare. Some of us think he was part of a secret society, and that's found here as well with the fatherless widow's son reference. For all this to occur where the Shakespeare codes are also printed seems, in my opinion, to add to the possibility of design, especially when you compare it to previous Bibles and see the changes that were made. Of course, none of this is proof that Edward de Vere was Queen Elizabeth's son, or that Henry Rosley was theirs. But I have to say that the verse about a mother who's hardened against her young as though they weren't hers, with the change in gender and verse number so that her labors printed over the number 17, is very curious. Add to that, it's on the page where Job chapter 40 begins, has 4T King at the start of the page, and is typeset, so there are 40 lines from verse 17 to chapter 40, which is then 40 lines to the end of the page. 
I think it's all pretty extraordinary. 4T and 1740 are being used here, like with the Shakespeare codes. If 1740 and 4T are ciphers that refer to Edward de Vere, then are these acrostics and typesettings telling us not only that he was Shakespeare, but that he and his siblings were children from a mother who never acknowledged them. It fits the narrative of the Prince Tudor theory, which is not my intention to prove, but the more I look for clues to the Shakespeare authorship question, the more I keep finding things, albeit in code, that tell me Edward de Vere was a king. Honestly, I set out to make a video only to review the Shakespeare codes I'd posted last year and consolidate the findings into a single video. Then I noticed the verse 17 acrostics and other possible codes. As always, you can decide for yourself if any of this is real. Thank you to Alexander Waugh, Ron Raphael, and Christopher Johnson, who post videos under the name Nobody Oxfordian. Please check them out. And to J. Hall Carpenter for pointing out Exodus 22.22 in Oxford's Geneva Bible. And thank you for watching.